is Valley News Live at 10. We begin tonight with breaking news tied to a police situation at a South Fargo apartment complex. We now know one man is on the run with several warrants out for his arrest. Fargo police surrounded the Crescent Park apartment complex tonight looking for 22 year old Tremaine Rainey. He's wanted on charges of reckless endangerment, probation violations and fleeing. After a search of the area, officers tell us they believe he left before they arrived. Police are asking you to be on the lookout for Rainey, who is described as being about five foot eight, 180 pounds, brown hair and brown eyes. You just saw a picture of him. If you see him, please say do not approach him. Give them a call instead. Meanwhile, new tonight at 10, one year after attempting to take his own life, a suicide survivor is sharing his story tonight, hoping to save a life. Valley News Team's Bailey Hurley has details, but first a warning to our viewers. Some of the details shared in this interview could be triggering. Please watch with care. I think that was the most hurtful thing that I have ever done to anybody. Monty Eckern's story starts just over a year ago with a bad day at work, and that ended at the bar for what was supposed to be just one drink. That's after 10 years of riding. Eckern struggled with heavy drinking for nearly three decades, and he says his relapse had him feeling like a failure. When I got home, I picked up a gun and shot myself. Eckern's son-in-law later found him on the floor, prompting Eckern to be rushed from hospital after hospital for life-saving care before going on to spend five months in intense rehab. It's not worth it. You don't realize until something happens how much you need somebody. I'm not, neither one of us will ask for help, which is what got him into this in the first place. And that's what the Eckerns hope others take away from their story. There is help out there. We all fall off that wagon occasionally, and you just got to get right back on it. They say they want others to know tomorrow is a better day, urging those struggling with depression, suicidal thoughts, or addiction. Instead of reaching for a bottle, reach for a friend. If, if we're going through hell, <laughs> keep on going. Don't look back. Bailey Hurley. Valley News Live. A powerful story. Eckern mm. has at least three more surgeries left to help reconstruct his nose and lips. The first of those procedures is set to happen in February. All right, switching gears now, take a look outside. Hutch is in with your first look at the forecast, and uh, looks like about a half moon tonight, Hutch. Yes, indeed. We can at least see the moon as skies have cleared out. The wind finally calm, but it's definitely cold, and it is a first alert weather day on Friday. Here's the latest, and in fact, we have models updating right now. As far as the track and timing go, there's a shift from what we last talked about with regards to the timing of the snow event, starting a little earlier on Friday, which means it's wrapped up by Friday evening's drive. So by that Friday evening commute, you can see where the darker blue shades are. That's where the better chance of seeing the two to five inch snowfall potential totals is going to be. That's along and north of Interstate 94 and really along and north of Highway 200. So as you go from Carrington through Grand Forks and into northwest parts of Minnesota, that looks to be the most likely place with a sharp drop off right here near Fargo, but still a good shot at a couple of inches anyways in the Fargo Moorhead area with lower amounts to the far south and far north. So things get going mid morning Friday lasting till mid afternoon. It comes with gusty wind, blowing snow, reduced visibility, icy roads. Typical winter travel conditions with some areas that could be a little tricky at times. Right now, it's cold, nine below zero, but a warm front moving through. This don't look like a warm front, but there is one. Trust me, it's going to kick off some clouds, some wind, and some flakes for your morning. We'll have details on what you can expect for Thursday. We'll look closer at that system on Friday in your hour by hour forecast here in a moment. All right, thanks so much, Hutch. New developments tonight in a North Dakota murder case that drew national attention this year. The lawyer for 41 year old Shannon Brandt argues there may not be enough evidence to prove intentional homicide. Now, this is the lawyer talking. Brandt is accused of hitting and killing 18 year old Kaylor Ellingson with his SUV 
following what may have been a political argument in rural McHenry. If the judge finds there is not probable cause, Brandt would be released. However, officials could later recharge him or bring different charges. Along with the murder charge, Brandt is also charged with fleeing the scene. His preliminary hearing is set for Tuesday in Foster County. Stick with Valley News Live for updates on that one. We now know the names of the two people killed in a house fire in Lisbon earlier this month. Family members say they're John and Courtney Person. Firefighters found them while battling the blaze on November 18th. The home a total loss. Still no word on the cause. A GoFundMe has been set up by the family to support the couple's daughter. That link is on our website. Just click on this story. Continuing coverage out of NDSU, where yesterday the school's president announced plans to restructure their institution. The first step is reorganizing and potentially merging or eliminating some academic programs. So what does that mean for current and prospective students? As Valley News team's Nashe Taylor explains, we don't know. In October, NDSU President David Cook announced major budget cuts, citing a budget shortfall of $10.5 million. To cut costs, the university is considering decreasing the number of colleges and possibly cutting or merging some programs into others. Since it's a college, we're here to be educated, so cutting programs likely isn't a great way to save some money. Students are now questioning the possible impacts of the proposed plan. Just kind of curious for the most part. Uh, there could be a lot of different effects, especially depending on if they also cut down on how many people are working there in each of the different departments. Some students say the strategy may not be the best move. They're spending money left and right. They just built a new football complex. It feels a little odd to cut academic programs. President Cook says that there is opportunity to add more programs following the reorganization. He says the goal is to help the university stay attractive to future students and the workforce, but students worry this may not be the case. NDSU is a big engineering school and they have a new nursing program and things like that. So depending on what ones they cut, it could really cut down on students that want to attend NDSU. NDSU has yet to determine which programs could be cut or merged. A comprehensive plan for the potential changes isn't expected until January. In Fargo, Nishay Taylor, Valley News Live. For now, NDSU is asking for feedback from students regarding possible restructuring options. For more information, visit our website and click on this story. More people in Minnesota will soon be able to use medical marijuana. People with IBS and OCD will soon be able to apply for a license starting in July. Research shows the drug can help with symptoms for those who suffer from those conditions. State health leaders denied petitions to add opioid abuse disorders to the list, saying there is not enough evidence for its effectiveness in those cases. A local group is taking a look at housing needs in the Fargo-Moorhead area. They're asking you to take a 13-question survey, provide some feedback. That survey will help with decision-making and improving their long-term sustainability and quality of the housing market in our region. We have a link to the survey on our website, Valley News live.com. Travelers will soon have more spots to park at Hector International Airport in Fargo. The airport is looking to double its capacity. This includes adding a parking lot to the east side with 363 spaces. The current economy lot has 323. It's being done in an effort to address growing demand and ease congestion. Flyers are also now encouraged to book parking online before their trip. In the season of giving, unfortunately, there are a few Grinches out there who view it as the season of taking. One new scam making the rounds claims there are issues with your shipping address. It'll ask for credit card information to pay for a redelivery. The site looks legit until you glance at the URL. This is really widespread. If they demand um, payment or there's kind of an urgent message looking for information, like something's wrong, um, they, you know, legitimate package delivers will not use these tactics. And precautions shouldn't stop online. To stop porch pirates, West Fargo police recommend sending packages to your business or having a neighbor hold on to them until you return. An estimated 15,000 nurses in Minnesota are voting on whether to go on strike again. The results are expected within this hour. They are protesting what they say are unfair labor practices. The vote would affect 16 hospitals in the Twin Cities, Twin Ports, and two harbors on the north shore of Lake Superior. Beret Leone has the details. 
Back in September, thousands of nurses went on a three-day strike citing unfair labor practices. And now union nurses say these issues have only gotten worse and they still have yet to reach a contract agreement. In order to strike, at least two-thirds of the vote needs to be in favor. And if it's approved, health care workers could be walking off the job in a matter of 10 days. Nurses on the front line say these last few years have been brutal and change is needed to survive. Our hospital is on life support. We need change, we need improved staffing, we need our leaders who claim to value us to prove it. Our patients and families deserve it, and we the nurses deserve it. We are doing this so that when you come to a Minnesota hospital, you can expect the quality care that used to exist. We've heard from several hospital groups regarding today's vote. Alina sent us a statement reading in part, quote, an agreement can only be reached by being at the bargaining table together and that a strike or threat of strike creates an unnecessary distraction for our employees and the communities we serve. Twin Cities Hospital Group says in part, quote, our nurses continue to be valued partners in care, and this principle is central to who we are as health systems, and it extends to all our work in union negotiations. Also noting that the hospital group has offered the highest wage increase in more than 15 years to their nurses. We should know the final tally of the vote by 11 p.m. tonight.